let's say I fill a beaker with hydrochloric acid and I then add some water to that solution we would observe that the temperature would start rising if I were to remove some energy from that mixture to get the temperature back to where we started I could add more water and the temperature would rise again, I would remove some energy and the temperature would fall again. If we drew a graph of the situation, every time noting the amount of water that we added and the amount of energy that we remove, we would find that even though we added similar amounts of water, we would have to remove slightly less energy every time. Eventually, the energy removed would go to zero and we would approach a asymptote. The energy removed in such an experiment is known as the enthalpy of solution. In this case, particularly the integral enthalpy of solution. For water added to HCl, the asymptote that we, are, that we arrive at is about 75,000 joules per mole. You'll find these uh, heat of solution tabulated in tables like this one from Himmelblau. Notice that these two columns indicate the amount of water added to one mole of HCl. So we start with a known amount of HCl and we add a certain amount of water. So reading this axis goes in this direction. And the axis that we've indicated here, which indicates for a given amount of water added what the energy removed had to be uh, what how much energy had to be removed in order to get the temperature back to 25 that would be this column over here the so-called differential heat of solution in other words the difference between the enthalpy at these two steps uh, is indicated over here so that's the difference between two of these uh, integral steps This last column is a heat of formation for the solution that can be used instead of the heat of formation for pure components. This allows a heat of formation, uh, heat of solution data to be incorporated easily into energy balances. So in other words, if there are mixtures that you know have non-zero um, enthalpies of mixing, a table like this can allow you to use this heat of formation instead of the heat of formation that you would have been using for that um, amount. In this heat of formation, the heat of formation of water is taken as zero. Another piece of numeric as a simple example, let's imagine that we had one mole of HCl to begin with in our beaker. And if we had added 15 mole of water, we would have had to remove the amount that is on the tables over here. In other words, we would remove 71 kilojoules per mole of HCl. Now note that this means that we are removing 71 kilojoules for 16 moles of solution. This means that uh, in problems involving enthalpy of solution it's very important to see w in what units the answer is asked for. So if we are asked for this answer in moles, uh, in joules per mole solution, we would have to divide by 16 to give 4.4 kilojoules per mole solution.